Hello and welcome to the presentation of Surfboard. So I'm Dylan Mitchell here, founder at Cowboy Studios, and we're gonna walk through ways that you can save time on all of these systems. So lighting, lighting trolls, power distribution, fire alarm, and low voltage systems. So this is gonna be for surfboard and skimboard. Surfboard handles lighting, lighting controls, power distribution, and fire alarm systems with skimboard dealing with your low voltage. There's gonna be some overlap, but really uh, if you're doing low voltage systems, so data, floor boxes, cameras, wireless access points, you're gonna wanna use skimboard and then surfboard for everything else. If you aren't sure about lighting or don't deal with a lot of lighting layouts, then uh, we have a, another solution for you, longboard. But we're gonna cover surfboard as that does really everything and then skimboard for our low voltage systems. Now, the biggest challenges that most engineers are facing, it's really not enough time. You end up working super late nights, weekends, you know, 50, 60, 70 hours a week, and you really get burnout, stressed, and that is just no fun for everybody. I've been there. We've all been there. The other piece is getting and going over budget on your projects. With this, it's no fun to get yelled at for going over budget for the umpteenth time on your projects. And as electrical engineers, we know that it's typically not our faults and that there's a lot of changes towards the end. But if we can minimize our drafting time and our upfront layout time, then we can help protect our budgets moving forward. The other one is looking for people. So the typical way that firms have scaled is to add additional people to their staffs. Ultimately that shows weakness in the systems and processes, handing off of projects to others becomes cumbersome and not always the best transitions. So while People are vital to our business and especially the engineering side of it. We shouldn't be looking for drafters really to help us scale. Uh, there's better systems to put in place than just hiring additional people. Setting standards is also a, another challenge for firms. See standards in putting devices in the every room or the, like a typical layout. Sometimes it's challenging, or you miss that one room that ends up costing you thousands of dollars, or the owner thousands of dollars. So by using a machine and a tool to lay those devices out, we're gonna minimize the errors and omissions in our drawings and really help you craft better quality products. See, there's just a few simple steps to getting electrical design in minutes, and that's testing it, really downloading it, testing it on a previous model, do some training and onboarding, and depending on where we are, that might be virtual or that might be on site. We'll just see what the travel availability is at the time of scheduling. Then for you to approve and use it internally for you and your teams. Three easy steps to get electrical design in minutes, save you a lot of time and reduce the amount of stress that you have on your projects is really what we'd like to help reduce and help solve for you and your teams. Without further ado, we'll hop over to a demo. So with this, here's a 40,000 square foot office building. It's three stories, there's nothing in it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run surfboard. So for this model, uh, if we go to links, it's just one, one simple model loaded in here. We made sure that room binding is turned on and we've set up some views and had some levels in here. We've also added a couple reference planes, um, go to view, on each model um, if we would like to add devices to reference planes. So that's all that we've added in here, three reference planes, link the model in, and we're gonna provide a pretty close to design document set here in a few minutes. So we'll pop up surfboard here. It's connecting to the license server. And all the licensing is done through the Autodesk App Store. So 
it's through your Autodesk ID, and that's how it's linked. So with this, there's a default menu. So what you're gonna do is pick your most common troffer, most common device light fixture that you're gonna use throughout the project. Your kind of default foot candle level, what the lighting level is in the majority of your spaces, your work plane heights, and then you're gonna come over here to this coefficient of utilization. And what that coefficient of utilization is, amounts to coming to a cut sheet, a lighting cut sheet. So this is a Lithonium uh, BLT troffer. And for this, you'll come down, this is you know page three or four, and from here you'll select your, so here's your floor uh, reflectivity value, your ceiling reflectivity value, and your wall reflectivity values. So if we do 80, 50, 20, which is pretty typical and standard, we'll get these values and that is what we'll input here to surfboard. So we'll go ahead and input these values. And you'll do this for the standard fixture. And as so long as you're using the same fixture family, you're gonna be just fine. So we'll update Lumen's values. We're gonna select everything. And with this, you can also reduce you know, the foot candle levels here. You can change the types. So we'll change a type here. And then if you had a different fixture, you can also update the coefficients in this. And this is for each and every room. So all the rooms are consolidated here. So you see there's two different cafeterias. One is spelled differently, so it's on a different line item. If you're doing an office and you had Bob's office, Sally's office, Susie's office, those would all be on separate line items. But for all rooms that have the same room name, it will be on a single line since we're making the assumption that those rooms will have the exact same figures uh, and fixtures in them, the same layouts. So you can also host those to a reference plane. So if we go down here to our lounge, we'll select on a reference plane. It might not be picking up the ceiling uh, because one lounge might not have one. So we'll go ahead and just host it to a reference plane. And we'll say that this is at nine feet. Also the electrical room, this is a little high. So we'll just go ahead and say that's at nine feet as well. That is all there is to lighting. You'll go through, select your fixture types, your lumen values, right? If we want 20 foot candles in the restrooms, select these. Simple as that. Now, receptacles. We'll also choose a default device and a default number per wall. One's a pretty good number to go with for starters. So we'll go ahead and hit okay, select everything. Maybe we don't want them uh, on the walls and the corridors. And for a couple rooms, so for this conference room, we're going to select two devices per wall. And this per wall is going to be evenly spaced devices on every wall in that room. Pretty straightforward. And then the instruction room will come to perimeter spacing and we'll do six feet and 12 feet. This is great for like conference rooms, for the new code item, or for multi-family projects. So that's the other place that you can use that perimeter spacing. Now for each of these we can select different types of devices. So we'll do a GFCI six inches from the door in the men's room. Come down and we'll do the same thing here in the toilet as well as in the women's restroom. Pretty simple straightforward way to put devices throughout the building. Now, moving to switches. Say we want dimmers, let's just do one at every door. We'll select everything. We don't want the corridor side, so we'll deselect those. We don't need a dimmer in the uh, single pole is what we need in the electrical rooms. We'll also look at the men's room, single pole, same in the Storage, toilet, women's. There we go. And then we'll come up here to our instruction room and we'll put two dimmers at each door. Now, occupancy sensors. 
Again, you're gonna load your default type, default one that you want throughout the building and your coverage diameter. So 22 feet is a pretty typical coverage pattern. You select everything. You can also select a reference plane if you choose. So based on that 22 foot diameter, it's gonna do the spacing and it's gonna do that for every single uh, space within the building, except for stairs. Let's say we don't need one in the men's, the women's, the toilet, uh, storage, sprinkler. So we can come in here and check and uncheck uh, the rooms that we do and don't want devices in. Smoke detectors, so if you needed this for your facility and let's say it wasn't sprinkled, so we're gonna just check everything. It's a 30 foot coverage pattern is what's embedded into the sprinklers. So you'll see it, a kind of typical layout. For this, a couple panels in each electrical room, I'll just select those and uh, we can make changes to that if we choose. Here we'll come through and for this we'll just pick, um, let's actually do 75 for everything and then um, corridor, we're actually going to place some ceiling devices. So that looks good for most of these. Drafting, uh, the men's, come down. So again, you go through for each room and select your candela rating. Then for ceiling devices, again, we're gonna load our custom one, 15, and we're gonna place that on a reference plane in the corridors. So we're gonna go ahead and run everything. The point of Surfboard and really all of our tools is to give you simple and easy layouts very, very quickly. So all of this is in real time. It's gonna take a couple minutes to run through this 40,000 square foot facility for all these devices. So typically this would take you um, maybe a week, week and a half to go through and do, especially if you think about doing all of your lighting calculations in all of these spaces. While there is gonna be some cleanup, the amount of time it's gonna save you in laying out these devices, giving you those really straightforward solutions, and then having the ability to now have conversations with all of the other disciplines and the owner is greatly improved right? You can run this after just getting the architectural model and now you can have conversations. You can make adjustments and fine tune everything moving forward. So it gives you a great starting point and really from everyone that we've talked to takes about 30% out of your projects. It's on average and some will do better. Some might not do as well depending on the complexity of your projects. But for schools, K-12, higher ed, commercial office space, and for primary care, outpatient, and even some in-hospital applications, this is going to be a great tool to get you started and up and running very quickly on your projects. So here we go. We've, uh, well, actually, we'll just add them up real quick. So we have 577, to about 356, 118, 110, 82, 24, 110, eight. So 13, 1400 devices super quickly throughout your model. And this includes all the calculations uh, that you would do for light fixture placement. So again, very, very quick, easy way to get a model laid out simply and straightforward. So let's go through the model. And here's a couple places that maybe fixtures weren't found and to check them out. So here we go, here's the first floor ceiling. And one thing to note is the light fixtures are laid out as you would lay them out if there were no ceiling in place. So if we look at it here, the fixtures are centered within the room. And if I can grab the here so 5255 511 511 you know they're centered in this room and you know if you need to orient them to the grid uh, and I know this isn't necessarily the quickest way to select 
all these devices, but if we go ahead and if you needed to rotate them, right, you can remove the reference, but um, quick, easy way to, to do that, or we can do the same thing here in the corridor. So if you wanted to, to do that here in the corridor, light fixtures, rotate, So simple and easy way to, to do that. And then you can, for these fixtures here, you know, you'll be able to plop them into the grid. So if we do that for this room, you know, and ultimately this isn't what we'd want. So if we um, go back here, If we go back, you know, this is centered in the room and ideal for no shadows and really what you would want an ideal lighting layout. So there is lighting. And if we, so if we look, here's one floor, second floor, third floor. And yes, there's gonna be adjustments through this. Uh, we don't deny that there's gonna be adjustments and here's, you know, the corridor that it, it missed. And yet here is all of your occupancy sensors uh, throughout this corridor. Got two dimmers on the wall, fire alarm devices. So for how fire alarm devices are placing is on a door wall. So if there's multiple doors uh, within the room, you're gonna get some multiple fire alarm devices placed. Um, like in this case, you know, you can see here, and then you'll just, you know, come through and, and delete the devices that, that don't make sense. But for by and large, it's going to be on that door wall, and you'll have your fire alarm device. So there's fire alarm. That P is for smoke detectors. So that smoke detector is there in each room, and the CT is your occupancy sensor. So we're not handling coordination, um, just because if you had didn't have smoke detectors, you don't want the occupancy sensor there. So you'll still make the determination on where those devices land, but they are in their proper location from the start. So then it is up to you to determine which direction you'd like those devices to go, whether the aux sensor goes left and the smoke detector goes right. Um, that is your determination. So fire alarm devices, aux sensors, smoke detectors, switches, there's two at each door as we placed we'll come in here and look at a section view so for surfboard it is reading all of the dimensions of our content so for these fire alarm devices you can see the strobes are above the ceiling well that's because it's reading this elevation and it needs to be lowered so you come in here select them all and drop that location down to what it needs to be. So that we could save that out in the family to get that location to be correct. Uh, if we look at our switches here, they're at four feet, as is read from the family. Receptacles, one six. Oops, fine, shaded. So we look at these, here's a switch, four feet, elevation. Receptacle. One six. So again, we're reading the elevation from the families. Now we look at these devices. Here's our light fixtures and they are ceiling mounted. And here is our smoke detector, also ceiling mounted. Now, if we go to the lounge space, which I believe is up here. So if we go to this First floor, second floor. So there's the lounge. Um, actually, we go back and we'll cut a new section up here through the lounge. The reason for that is we'll open this up. The reason for it is the reference plane is not in this view. So we'll come back. Our reference planes are here. So for the we'll 
grab my reference plane. All right, so here's the reference plane. We'll move these devices back down to zero below the If we now go look, second floor, cut a section, and we look at our fixtures. So here's our fixtures on the second floor in those lounge spaces. So if we need those to, to move up, we'll have to go back to where our reference plane is, drag it up to that view. So. There we go. Um, so that's reference plane hosting. Pretty simple and straightforward. And that's really everything through Surfboard. We've covered lights, receptacles, switches, aux sensors, smoke detectors, panels, um, horn strobes. So let's actually we'll go back and we'll look at horn strobes. So here's our visual um, horn strobe devices that are laid out in the corridors. Uh, this is technically a lobby, so here's the other few devices in the corridors. Now we look at panels. We put two panels in each electrical room, so there's two, two panels, and here's another two panels. Also within this space, we find that there's multiple panels. So we put two, but these walls are the same size. So in some of the bigger electrical rooms, you're going to get um, some duplicates, or really some additional panels, um, which typically will turn out just fine in these larger electrical rooms. But then for your smaller electrical rooms, you're gonna get just two panels. And also we had a single switch. So that's here in the uh, electrical room and we had GFCIs in the restrooms. That covers everything for Oh, for receptacles, so we're gonna go here. We're gonna first look, here is our six feet and 12 feet. We're not gonna place anything on glazing or glass, so that gets excluded. And then if we look at our device here, if I can grab the center of it, 12 feet and 12 feet again for our perimeter spacing. Then if we look at um, so here's a conference room, two devices, evenly spaced on each wall. So that was one of our other placement methodologies. Meth methodologies. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to look at uh, Skimboard, and one of the things that we're going to end up doing is looking at uh, floor boxes. So I'm going to adjust the view height of that to deal with uh, floor boxes. So this is Skimboard, and we're gonna run through this. So again, you're gonna pick a typical data uh, device, wall mounted, wall hosted, and we're gonna put it in a number of rooms throughout the building. Do some intercom placement. Go ahead and check those card readers. So this will go on the secure side. So we want to make sure that we're selecting the secure side uh, doors. So corridors, lobbies, stairs vestibules, um, those are typically where we would like to see our card readers. Wireless access points. And again, this will need a coverage diameter. Typically 25 feet is just fine for wireless access points. We'll go ahead and select everything here. For floor boxes, um, one is again, pretty uh, good for most devices. We're gonna select a couple of rooms here. So one, we'll do the computer lab, we'll do a conference room, and actually we'll put two in our conference rooms, and we'll do the instruction room as well, and put two in there. For cameras, oops, we'll select our uh, default ceiling mounted camera, and then we're just gonna select our corridors for these uh, corridor lobby, and vestibule. And then the other one that we'll select is a wall mounted camera um, that'll go in the stairs. So when we do this, we'll need to look at it. Um, oops. 
Oops. All right, so we're going to run through here and find our I am missing my family. So for right now, for this, we're just going to put a data outlet wall mounted um, in there, but it'd be another wall mounted camera that you would put um, within that. So we'll just for now, placeholder, put those in, and then we're just going to run everything. Again, this will take uh, just a minute to run 40,000 square feet and all the rooms that we selected. And there are varying price points. So surfboard with everything is gonna be the um, most investment that you'll be making with uh, longboard being half the investment and then uh, surfboard being, or skimboard being a smaller investment as well. So with this floor plan, let's um, go ahead and we'll take off fire alarm devices, electrical equipment, fire alarm devices. Take off lighting controls, lighting devices. All right. So here are our floor boxes. These circles are our wireless access points. And these four boxes are going to be in the center of the room along the longest dimension. That's why you can see these two this way and these two the other way. So there's four boxes. Here's our wall mounted um, camera, which we can flip out this family for another. Uh, so this would be a ceiling mount, but uh, it's not going to let me. But we'd flip that out for a camera. These are ceiling mounted, so it's not the, the right type, but a uh, ceiling mounted camera. This is above the door, card reader, card readers. And then if we look at our ceiling plan, we can see our other cameras. With this, we're gonna flip off our lights. So here's our car readers, occupancy sensors. Here's one of our cameras. And they're gonna be at the end of the corridors. So one of the cameras, we can select all instances and entire project. See some here. Here's one of the other cameras. camera since this is one of the spaces a camera here camera here again an initial layout for your cameras card readers access points you know whether you want them into the user restroom so you, whether you want them into there or not um, but initial camera layouts where you can now you know modify um, if this is the proper location on where you want devices or maybe you need them in some different locations. But they're there, you'll have counts, and really a quick way to lay out devices throughout your models. So thank you for watching um, this layout and tutorial going through surfboard and skimboard. So surfboard has everything. Longboard is a reduced version. This does not have lighting in it, but everything else. So surfboard's got your lights, receptacles, lighting controls, fire alarm, power distribution, and longboard does not have lighting. And if you would like just lighting controls, so just switches and occupancy sensors, then boogie board is what you would be looking for. And skimboard is all the data devices. So thank you for watching.